So this is part four of Ray telling his part of his journey of his life homeless, living on the streets. He's just finished the last video of leaving King's Cross, travelling all the way or thumbing it up to Dubbo. And so Ray, can you continue your story or your journeys? So I left the circus because they disrespected me and they weren't paying me right and they were giving me uh, shit food. I can't glamorise it any, any other way. It was just terrible food. So there was total disrespect for yeah, the work that you did? Yeah, they did. They yelled at you, told you to hurry up. And, you know, I'm only 17. I'm only a young boy. What would a young boy know? And there was a lot of older people there. And they had everyone had their job. So, cut a long story short, I ended up leaving him. Come the ride back to Melbourne. And Just at that point, Ray, did you ever um, reveal to anybody that you had an acquired brain injury at the time? No, I didn't. So you just... You just did your work and, and kept quiet about it. Yeah, because no one wants to know if you've got a disability or a brain injury. And at that at that age, I suppose, you didn't really understand it very well yourself. That's it, and I still don't understand it to this day. You know, you've got rules and regulations as you can, can and can't do with your quiet brain injury. With the first brain injury, because I understand that you had quite a few down the track as you got older. With the very first one, you were only 17 or 18, I believe. 17. Okay. And you picked up a, a job in um, Derildery. Yeah, I was working for um, some horse people as a stable hand and because um, of me and my drinking alcohol all the time because I was a chronic alcohol alcoholic. I've been clean for 10 years now and I won't go back, so I'm pretty proud of that. And for anyone out there that thinks that oh, I've got tickets on myself because I've given up alcohol, it doesn't roll like that. I had to achieve to give up the alcohol because uh, my first bad accident, um, I got bashed in Derildry, left clinically dead in the gutter, and then they flew me from Derildry to Eston Airport, from Eston Airport to Royal Melbourne, clinically dead. Ended up in hospital. What were you doing in Derildery at the time? I was a stable hand. I was mucking out stables. I was putting the rugs on the horses. I was scraping them down when they were hosing them, scraping them, feeding them. Just doing what a lackey does in the horse world. So that was an, another job that you picked up on your travels. But I liked it. Yeah, I did, but I liked it. And unfortunately, I didn't stay there too long because stupid me. And... Uh, got a hold of the grog again and it stuffed everything up. Mm. Okay, so that was your, your first acquired brain injury and um, I but we'll get up. we'll get back to your travels once you once you got back to Melbourne and we'll go back to that at another time. Yeah, yeah. So I'm back in Melbourne again. I went back to St Kilda, caught up with some old skinheads back in the day and just started the old routine of getting drunk and didn't give a shit about my life, smoking cigarettes like there was no tomorrow, ruining my life and not at a young age. and didn't know right from wrong back then. I know right from wrong now and that's what I got up to was terrible. But anyway, so um, I then I started from there, stayed there for a couple of months and then I, I went to boarding houses. For people that don't know what boarding houses are, uh -huh. they happen to be um, like, how do you put it, like a house or an old factory, and they rent out um, individual rooms. So, so what was the first boarding house that you ever lived in? The first boarding house was down in Fitzroy, in Fitzroy, mm -hmm. not St Kilda Fitzroy, but Fitzroy itself. Mm -hmm. um, it was in... Um, Gertrude Street, Gertrude Street, the... yeah, yeah. And the lady that used to run that boarding house, she was called Duda. She was an old Greek lady, little lady. I, I remember it was like it was yesterday. She used to say, you you pay your money. Come on, they keep you out. You know, the real new Australian lady. You could tell the accent and the way she carried on. So I stayed there for a while, got sick of that one because there was a lot of drunks and wasn't the best boarding houses I've ever stayed at and I shifted out of that one and then I went around the corner 
She was born house. Which is, was or is, I understand, still standing in, in Nicholson, Nicholson Street, Street Carlton, That's correct. across Street. the road from the exhibition buildings. That's and the right. exhibition gardens. Exactly. So, yeah, I stayed there. Had to pay, um, I think back then it was only like $50 a week. So that's a hundred a fortnight. And what was what were the conditions there like? Um, the rooms were much better, and the kitchens. They had the kitchen set up where you could go in and uh, cook your food. When you say much better, is that in comparison to the Lady Doodars? Yeah, yeah. Premises. Right. Uh, that was a Rolls Royce place compared to Doodars. Hmm. Pretty rough. Oh, were yeah. Were there other young men? Or were they mainly older men in the, in this particular no, boarding there was house? A mix. There was a mix of older men, younger men, people on drugs, people on alcohol, people with mental issues. It was a big, big... Ex-cons? Ex, yeah, you, you you name it. There's a whole heap of them. It was all mixed. But it was it was bigger than Dudas. It was two stories high and about 200 rooms. And the, and the place still stands today. Have yeah. you ever been back to yeah, revisit I went, it? I went back there uh, a year ago or two years ago and had a look at the place. It hasn't changed. Does that bring back any positive memories or no, any negative? No, it doesn't. Negative? Um, only positive that I get out of it is I've, st I've, I've been there and I'm out of there and I'm achieving stuff now. Fantastic. That is a really um, positive and positive I, message to people out there. I'm a strong believer for all you out there. Never give up, and there's always hope for us. If we if we fall down, let's get back up tomorrow. Um, I'm always I'm lucky. I've always been a fighter in my channel. I've always, you know, got knocked down and got back up again. How long did you stay at this Osborne house? I stayed house? at Osborne house until I got uh, into a bit of a. Uh, what would you say, a bit of a fight. A bit of a tricky situation. Yeah, yeah, a nasty situation. Do you got, remember that? I got myself into, I, um, yeah, I ended up getting my throat cut. And, oh, God. And, yeah, I won't go into it because it's pretty ugly because you could, don't forget, back in those days you had ex-crims in there, you had drug addicts, you had prostitution coming in, you had all types of people in there. And that was bound to happen. I've seen violence in that joint every second every second day. Um, I stayed in that place for roughly about a year and then I got it, I just got out of there. So going back to when you had your throat cut, do you remember what that was about? Were you just an unlucky person in the wrong place at the wrong time? That's it. I don't want to talk about it because it's too traumatising for me. Did you go to hospital yeah, with Yeah, I did, I did. I was lucky that he didn't cut the right right through it was only with a, a blunt knife mm. uh, we had a we had a disagreement he put there was two of them they put, pulled out a knife one got me and the other one just cut me it was over money and i might add the over money, and i all. might add the hospital was just around the corner yeah, right. saint vincent's Saint vincent's was only a stone throw away so i didn't have far to, to i didn't have far to go while my neck was bleeding. Did you get help from anyone that nah, run in, the joint? or? No, nah, back in those days, you, you're all on your own. You know, the only time those people wanted to know you was on payday. You go into the office, pay your money, and the rest is history. You don't want to share any more ex um, experiences at this particular place? No, nah, not really, because then after I left that place, I moved on to another place. And what was that? Back on the streets again. Back on the streets. This and, time, uh, where did you head this time? St Kilda. Back yeah. to the old homing ground. Yeah, yeah. And can you share what with us what happened then, if you can remember? Well, I went back to St Kilda to my same same old, same old person as I was before. Same people there? Drinking, yeah. No one, no one had changed. Everyone was the same people and uh, started drinking and uh, doing all this in a normal way and, um, yeah. So that was lucky in a way that they, you, your old stomping ground was still with the same people that you knew. Yeah, and then after that I sort of um, down St Kilda again. I got sick of uh, people dying in front of me through a drug overdose or whatever whatever drugs they were on. They were overdosing and dying in front of me. And um, I thought, you know, there must be something more in my life than just hanging around the streets and getting drunk. 
I didn't and being a dickhead. And I wanted to make more of my life, so I just moved on from St Kilda. You're very, very lucky that you did not get into drugs. Yeah, I, I because al not not um, saying that alcohol is any better, but you know, drugs can come with you know other mixtures mixed in them. You know, and at that's that right. time, at that time, luckily there, there was, was no ice. Um, you had the heroin and, you know, and all the, the pills and all the rest of yeah, it. Yeah, all that was around, but you, I was lucky that I had enough common sense to stay away from that, those drugs because um, I, I was going down a one-way road and that road wasn't good. Okay, so, so tell us more about that. So I decided to um, stop hanging around with all the street people and move out of St Kilda once again. Wow. So I ended up coming in my... 20s I come to um, Preston. So tell us a little bit about that. Whereabouts in Preston? Uh, the, I started hanging around the Preston market, but this this will be another story for another time. Yeah. Very um, interesting uh, chapter. So will we end it there for now and continue later on? Part four of Ray's very traumatic life living on the streets as a young man.